Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm so happy and excited that you are here for our 13th Q&A Live with Didi, Manifest with Ease, so that you can get your manifestation questions answered. And I'm really, really excited because we just launched a new series this week. It was a community chosen series, the deep dive into the now. And we're going to get into that today. So if you have any questions from any of the six episodes that have already gone up, let me know. And while we're waiting for everybody to join on board, I wanted to go over a little bit of housekeeping like we always do. First off, I have some thank yous for... Uh, many of the people that have been very supportive in the growth of the channel. So first, I'd like to thank all of our previous hot seat guests. So that would be Kervin, Kat, and Jill. Thank you so much for volunteering your time and sitting in the hot seat. I deeply appreciate that you, you were there and that you did that, and it was a wonderful experience. I want to thank some of my clients for allowing me to interview them for our Saturday client wins. So that would be... Uh, Sherry Elise, Declan Segura, and also Kat, once again, we're mentioning you. Hey, Marjorie, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just going over a few things. I want to thank to thank you to everyone who is subscribing. Hello, Gervin. Everyone who's subscribing, who is sharing the videos, who is uh, liking the videos, everything, every little thing you do really adds to the community and the channel. So I wanted to thank you for that. I also want to point out that we have two polls open right now. I've changed the voting time. So our weekly Friday chose community chosen video, the, the uh, voting will close on Wednesday night. So I can give you a reminder now. So if you haven't voted for the uh, video of the week, though, it looks like it's a landslide. Um, that's one thing that you can go and vote on. Go to the community tab and vote. The other thing is that I'm thinking about changing the time that we go live. So I put up another poll tonight. What would be the best time for you? And one option is keeping it to our 8 p.m., but I've also put some other options, keeping it on Wednesday night, but I know that the summer's coming, so I want to make this more flexible for everyone. But always, if you can't be here live, you can always uh, join us on replay. So if you haven't already told us who you are and who's here, please do so. Let us know where you're viewing from. I always love that. There's a few other reminders. We are having our April manifestation challenge Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. And that is in our community, our manifestation community called the Invincible CEO Circle. If you're already in the community, there's nothing for you to do other than to show up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday. And it will be a Zoom-like live. And if you haven't signed up yet, there is a link in the chat. There's also a link in the description box to do that. And you will also get access not only to the three-day manifestation challenge, but you'll get access to the whole entire group, which includes March is, March's manifestation challenge, which was the funny money manifestation challenge. And there's going to be an ongoing challenge every month. The other thing that I'm offering now, and I'm only going to do this for the Friday community chosen videos but I'm creating little workbooks. And since it looks like there's going to be a landslide, hey, Jill, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, since it looks like it's going to be a landslide, I already put the workbook up in the uh, Invincible CEO Circle. So once again, you can sign up in the description box below if you'd like to get the workbook for Friday's chosen video. Like I said, unless there's some kind of big upset tonight, it looks like that the three revision techniques, the three fun, simple, and easy revision techniques is going to be the topic. So the workbook is already in the Invincible CEO Circle, and you can download that and join along. Um, and it has some really cute graphics in there as we walk you through that on Friday. So let me see if I got through everything, the voting, the challenge, the workbooks. Also, if you are interested in being in a Wednesday live hot seat, there is a link in the description box below for you to sign up for that. Um, and it's an application. It's a little bit of a process. So if you sign up now, it might be a good two weeks before I could get you on the stream, but we will get you on here. And it's like having uh, your own one-on-one -on -one coaching session. You get an idea of what it is that we do. And I know you've seen some of those here. So welcome, 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 everybody, as you're coming on board. Also, I do have a Name Your Price course in the description box below. So you can put whatever you want, a dollar, a hundred dollars, a million dollars, whatever you want to uh, pay for that course. It is a wonderful course on your foundational assumptions, which we talk a lot about here. All right. So I got that out of the way. 
And I know there's a little bit of delay from when you uh, make a, a post in the chat. So if you have some questions that you would like some clarity on, I'm watching the chat as it comes up. We're going to be talking about the deep dive into the now moment, the series. So if you have specific questions about specific episodes, or if you want to share what it is that you're doing, your experiences, if you've gone into the experience, because what I love about this new series is, yes, we talk a little bit, but I take you into the experience of the now moment. And regardless if it's here on this channel or a different channel, you want to make sure that whatever is being taught to you when it's the freshest, right after you're viewing it, that you're taking yourself into the experience. Because right now, folks, where we are in manifestation is, can you sit here and conjure it in your mind and be patient and still enough for it to happen? Yes, you can. However, being a cooperative component to what it is that you're asking for helps a lot. So let's use a very practical example. Let's say that you want to uh, go into the gym and get into shape, right? You want to get fit and healthy. So you can sit here and you can do your imaginal acts and it's not to say that it's going to take long at all, but it allows for that conscious mind to come in and say, why isn't it happening fast enough? Or you're not doing enough. So what do we do? We take that inspired action and we get into the gym and start moving around. So when the mind comes in and saying it's not happening, there's no progress, you can counteract that, right? So the now moment is where the magic happens and being a cooperative component taking those bungee jumps. And I do want to talk about bungee jumps tonight because it's a very powerful way to induce a new reality because it feels like you are literally going to explode into pieces as you do it. Does anyone have any questions of what we've just mentioned so far? Or again, any specific questions? It doesn't necessarily even have to be to the deep dive. That's why we're live here today so that we you can get your questions answered. So the deep dive, I'm looking at the titles. So we started in episode one with one deep breath and we focused on a deep breath going deeper and deeper into the now moment, right? And just when you think you've, you're, just because you're breathing deeper that you've gone deeper into the now moment, we kept adding a layer. You felt the air through your nose and then you felt your chest expand and then you felt the air going down your throat. And we could have, we could have kept going and going and going and going with that. But for the length of the video, we kept it shorter. And I'm really trying to keep those videos under 30 minutes, folks. I really am. But I get so excited and just the information flies out. So then in our next video, we did hold your breath. And again, we did a point of focus. We induced something extreme that you're not normally used to, um, maybe special occasions, that maybe if you're swimming or again, holding breath seems to be something that you do when you're, there's a lot of tension going on, especially as a personal trainer. If I had a nickel for every time I told somebody to breathe while we were working out, because the more strenuous it got, people want to hold their breath when the opposite is needed. We really need you to do that breathing. So going into the deep breath and then holding your breath is a really powerful way to realize that you're becoming more and more present in the now because it takes you off of your normal routine. It takes you off of what you're normally used to. And then we really got into the echo chamber. Okay. And Marjorie saying she loves the new series. She's able to shut down the unwanted stories quickly. That's exactly it. And return to who you've chosen to be. And I know you may have heard that on other channels. And that's what I love that's different about what we're doing here. Yes, we're talking about the conceptual stuff, but we're also giving you ways to actually experience it because it's all a bunch of just noise until you actually start to bring yourself into the experience and you're opening up different parts of your mind that may not have been active. It's not that they're not there. It's not that it's not impressed. And I really want to go into this a little bit with the impressing of the subconscious mind. If your subconscious mind wasn't already impressed, excuse me, a little uncomfortable. If your subconscious mind wasn't already impressed, then you wouldn't be breathing. Your heart wouldn't be beating. Your, your cells wouldn't be dividing. You don't have to sit here and go, okay, heartbeat, heartbeat again, beat again. I got to impress my subconscious mind to keep my heart beating. You don't have to do that. The buffet is already filled, right? It, everything's laid out for you. And there's billions and trillions and gazillions, whatever number you want to call it, of options available to you in where now. Now is so important because I want you to think about where's the past, point to the past. 
Now we say the template in a way is a representation of the past, but really it's just a template. Just like if you were to start a website today, instead of having to code it yourself, you could go and buy a template and then start filling in your information, your pictures, your videos in the template. And somebody else could get the same template and create a whole different website with their videos and their verbiage and their photos. So when you start to really see this as like a video game that you're walking around and you become aware of your echo chamber, because that was really powerful. If we're saying hello and we go into that cave, we expect the echo to be hello back. And until it bounces around, until we can't see it anymore, or I'm sorry, hear it anymore. And then we do the echo again and we go hello again. And then it bounces around. But when you say hello, you don't expect goodbye. You don't expect the opposite. You expect a mirrored image to what it is that you're offering, even if, if the mirrored image is sound. So it's not always visual. So now when you command your reality and you say, I am a multimillionaire, and you look around and you are in the same physical template you were in prior to making that declaration, you got to allow the program to activate. And as long as you don't have a contradicting thought, that's the program that stays running in the background while you're just going about your day doing your ordinary things. And your mind will always use what template you're on in order to fulfill what you've asked for. So I'm going to share how uh, something happened for me back in the day. So back in the day, after I got divorced, I took a, a long time to work on me. Before I wanted to bring a partner into my life, I wanted to be the ultimate partner for myself because then when a partner did come in, I didn't need to ask anything of them because I was already complete as the person that I was. So anything, just like we said before in the Invincible CEO, anything that you decide and choose and command should add to you, not take away from you. But because I had been in a relationship for 23 years and had the dating mentality of a 17 year old when I was 40, I didn't know how all this worked. So I kind of gave myself rules of engagement. They had to be plus or minus three years of age. So three years younger, three years older. That means we would have at least been in high school at the same time. And they couldn't be at the gym that I worked at because I didn't want something not to work out and have to come into the gym and face somebody, especially because that's in my church and that's where I worked, right? So I didn't want to have that kind of messiness kind of uh, interacting with each other. But what it came down to is when I wasn't working at the gym, I was with the kids. I was taking care of the kids. I had five children. So after a while, when I started to realize that, you know, if I was dating, I'd have to go out an hour this way or an hour this way, because I really didn't want to have anything in the neighborhood, that little voice in my head said, how's that working for you? Because look what you're getting. You see what you're getting. And I realized I conditioned my reality. I conditioned my reality. And there wasn't a whole lot left of choice when I decided to look around and see what was there. So I had to release my conditioning. I had to let go of the age thing. I had to let go of the location thing. And then I opened up to, well, let's just see, instead of putting conditions on it, let's just open up to see what is offered in my mind in the template where I'm at. And it wasn't very long that next thing I know, one of the other trainers was asking me, who's my gym crush? And then when they asked me who my gym crush was, I mentioned who it was reluctantly. I didn't want to give it up at first, not knowing that she kind of knew him and then took it on her own to go over on my behalf and have a conversation with him. And lo and behold, 12 years later, Kervin and I are still together. And but he, he was going to that gym prior to that. He was there. But because I had those conditions that he didn't meet the age requirements and he didn't meet the location requirements because he was at the gym, but I had to do something. I had to take a bungee jump. I had to do something that the old me said, no, 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 that's not what we're going to do it here. 
But yet every day I was seeing what my conditioning was bringing to me. And if you've ever had to work with anything in computers, so if I send out an email to my email list, I can send it out to the whole list or I can put a condition that says, don't send it to this group of people. Maybe you already have the offer, so you don't need me to offer you an offer that you already have. So I can condition who the email gets sent to and the system must obey my command. So that's why the more present you're in, right? The more present you are in this now moment and you know what you command and you don't accept anything other than what you've asked for so that when the mind starts to offer you things, it's either part of what you command it or it's not. And if it's not, you reject it. And just because there was an offering made and it met the requirements of, um, I was opening up to the gym and I was opening up to different ages, it doesn't mean that the mind gets it right and just every single time the first thing that's delivered is what's delivered. It just so happened in this situation that was the case. But when you are conscious and present in the now moment, and we've been doing that with our zero point activation and our zero point assumption portal, where whether it's just three deep breaths and we allow everything to be, right? So this is great when those 3D circumstances seem so overwhelming. And what's showing up, and it can show up very strongly, it can almost seem like to the extreme opposite. And that's a really good sign. When the extreme opposite is coming in, that's a really good sign that it's about to pop. Just hang in for a little bit more and dig deeper and grow bigger roots into the assumption of what you've commanded. Because when it shows up, if you're really the new version of you, you're allowed to react, but you don't stay in the reaction. You allow it to be. And that's where that three deep breaths, you allow what's happening to happen. And then you command again. But you don't command from being upset. You don't command from being shaken. You step back into your power as your creator. And it's no, no, that's not what I've asked for. And then you allow it to unfold. So if you don't have any type of contradiction within you and your mind isn't testing you because of, are you worthy? It's actually seeing, are you ready? But it's not even testing you. It's saying, we are ready to shift. Are you ready with us? Because if you're still believing emotionally in the old reality, you haven't shifted yet. And the reality can't shift if you haven't because it mirrors you. It is not the leader. It only mirrors where you're at. And the nice thing is that when you're on a loop and you realize that you're on a loop, meaning um, following some old patterns, it sucked me back in. The story sucked me back in. It made me believe it was real. That's why we do every hour on the hour in my programs when we're Re, and I don't want to say we're not reconditioning the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind is on. We're almost conditioning our current conscious awareness. Most of the manifestation stuff has it backwards. The more conscious you are in a choice, the less repetition is needed. But at the very least, repetition will get you if you can't go deeper into the now, it'll just take a little bit longer. And what today's video was about showing you the perspective of the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, how they see the same room very differently. And we showed you how unnecessary thought and how do you know thoughts unnecessary? All thought is unnecessary. All thought is unnecessary because what's happening is happening and it doesn't need a story. It is obvious. It is so obvious that you could totally release thought that your subconscious mind knows what it is that you've asked for. And you don't have to ask for it over and over again. But when we talk about feeling it real and feeling the sensation, it's not about emotion. It's about the physical sensation that activates in your body. The more awareness that you give to this thing, and I will say to you now, the healthier and the better you treat your own body, the better of a beaconing tool it is for you because you'll become aware of the subtle stuff.
you'll become so aware of the subtle stuff that you can command your reality and your body will react and give you the confirmation feel that lets you know, I got this, it's done. Does anyone have any questions as we're reviewing this here? This is really powerful stuff. Each of those videos can be watched in and of themselves, but the way that they're unfolding, it's turning into this beautiful process. And this is how much I trust what's going on. I don't script my videos. I can't even tell you what the next video is going to be. Sometimes it reveals itself. I, I think video four revealed video five when we were recording video four. But as of right now, what video seven is going to be, episode seven, I don't know. But the one thing I know is that when I hit play tomorrow, it will be there. And I always do my zero point before I record. And the, the dialogue just flows. Do I have to do a little bit of editing? Every once in a while, I get tongue tied because so much of the information wants to get out very quickly. But most of the time, I'm going to the video and I'm play, pressing play and boom, it comes out. And the one video I think was yesterday's video, by the time I was done recording, it was 50 minutes long. It felt like I was only recording for 20 minutes. I was in psychological time, having so much fun doing. And the whole time that I am editing it and getting it ready on YouTube, I'm so excited because I know you guys are excited for the next episode. And I know that these videos are hitting really um, wonderfully with you because we're giving the conscious mind a script to follow along so that you stay focused here and now. And that's why not only do I love doing this, I love doing the coaching. I love being your bigger subconscious mind for you and keep reminding you what it is that you've asked for. And that's why you'll see that my clients have such great success that they have in the short amount of time. I mean, if you listened to Kat's interview last Saturday, and even in the short amount of time that we've been together, she now has inner peace that quickly. Once you start to realize anything and everything you want is yours for the commanding, it's yours for the taking. Because in your imagination, are you safe? And if I get a little overwhelmed with a script, because it seems like things aren't happening fast enough or they're not happening big enough or whatever the, the character my mind gets into, I stop, I do my three deep breaths, and I ask myself this one simple question, or maybe the next episode is starting to reveal itself. If I could imagine anything in the world, would I choose to imagine right here, right now, what I'm imagining? That is so powerful. Because if you could imagine a million dollars, if you could imagine unicorns walking down the street, if you could imagine everyone living in harmony, why would you ever imagine you don't have enough of something because that's imagination too. And you have to make a decision. And we haven't touched on this in a while in the videos and the lives that either everything's real or everything's imagined, but you got to let go of the duality because once again, if some things, is, some things are real and some things are imagined, you're a house divided within yourself. And we want to bring that duality to a zero point. We want to merge those two minds together. So either everything's real or everything's imagined. But either way, it's all you. And that's the biggest thing we, we got into yesterday is that the zero point is the I am. And the I am doesn't even need to be uttered. It is That is when you remove yourself from all of the story. And your breath and your existence and you're letting everything fade away. That you realize nothing happens outside of your consciousness. If you wake up and it's 7 a.m., and you look at the clock, and it says 7 a.m., 6.59 did not exist in your reality. Your reality started the moment that you opened your eyes because you just got here. And you just got here, and there is no story. That's why I love the morning time. You just got here. There is no story other than what's happening, what just happened. You opened your eyes. That's the story. Think about this. And then the next part of the story is you sat up and you're literally realizing and manifesting as you go because everything is, you, you make a movement, 
and then there's a wish fulfilled. Otherwise, if you think about this, when you're laying there in the morning time, you opened your eyes, wish fulfilled, you're, you're awake, aware here and now. And then when you go to sit up, there's another wish fulfilled. Like you're just wish fulfilling right off from the very beginning, first thing in the morning. And then you turn to sit on the edge of the bed, another wish fulfilled. Because you're dreaming and realizing simultaneously. And guess what? You didn't have to say to yourself, my eyes are open. I just sat up. I turned to get off the bed. My feet just hit the ground. I just stood up. You don't narrate any of that. That's why when you really begin to understand that you don't need words, you don't need language. And proof of this is that you weren't born a speaker. It had to be taught to you. You had to be conditioned by words. With no words, there's no limitations. That is so mind-blowing powerful. So if you, right off the bat, you open your eyes, you just got here, and you're giving yourself victory after victory after victory, but we're not taught that sitting up is a victory until you can't do it anymore. We're not taught putting your feet on the ground is a victory. So if you start from the very beginning, the moment that you opened your eyes, this whole thing exists just for you. You just woke up in this beautiful video game. And what do most people do? They pick up their phones. They condition themselves to a story immediately by picking up their phone. And I don't know how many, what the age of everybody watching here, but I went a good 40 years before this was a new appendage. When I had my first cell phones, they stayed in the car because they were just, you know, for an emergency, if I was driving and I had the kids in the car and we got stranded somewhere, it didn't even, my cell phones didn't even come into the house because we had the house phones. House phones were house phones, cell phones were cell phones. And this thing didn't exist to tell me who I was or who I wasn't. I got to do that. And now we look at this world of online, of social media, and yes, it's wonderful because here we are right here right now. But we look and we see everything there. If that's all real, then what is this? Because this is the stuff right here, right now in the physical flesh. That's where you can make your biggest impact with yourself. And you have to give yourself a break. Okay, so Jill says, when I'm managing myself in my new house, imagining myself in my new house, and I start thinking that I need to imagine how I get the money for the house, that is just me trying to put a story up. Right. Okay, so in your imagination right now, give yourself a pizza. Everybody give yourself a pizza. Whatever your favorite pizza is, and if pizza isn't is something you eat, then give yourself whatever your favorite thing is. But we're going to use pizza as an example. Now, let me ask you this, guys. Did you have to go to work to make the money to get the pizza? Did you have to pick up the phone and order the pizza in your imagination and wait for it to arrive? Or did you just go, voila, there's a pizza in front of you? That's what the power of imagination is. You can give yourself anything right here, right now. And this is all imagined right here, right now. So when you go and watch one of my other videos, we'll come back to the pizza in a minute. When you go to watch the video that I allegedly recorded earlier, but when you're watching it, that's the first time it ever came into being in your existence. It's only recorded in my existence. And you agree to the assumption that Dee Dee recorded a video and I can go watch it at any time or any other video on YouTube. But your mind is literally making up those videos right here, right now. How mind blowing is that? Do you guys get that? So when your pizza in your imagination, it's instant manifestation. And that's all this ever has been. Is instant manifestation, but you're always getting the assumption that you're in. You could wake up in that house tomorrow. If you believe that house was yours, like you believe whatever house you're in now, the reason why you keep waking up in the same house is that your mind 
goes on the assumption that you believe that's where you're waking up tomorrow. But if you think about when we dream at night, whether you had a dream last night or last one was five years ago, it doesn't matter. You immediately pull, like, like we do at zero point, you pull out of this reality and you go into another reality and think about this. When you're in that dream, it's real to you. You believe everything that's happening. You can have physical reactions. It's all real. Guess what? The same mind that makes this reality up makes that reality up. And to the version of you that's in there, it's just as linear. It's just as physically real. That's why we don't question our dreams until we teach ourselves how to question our dreams so we can go lucid in those dreams. How do you know right now that what you're in, what you would call your real life prior to finding the Invincible CEO channel, isn't a dream that there's another version of you right now on a bed sleeping and this is what he or she is dreaming. And because you can't prove it one way or the other, then you really can't prove that this is a real existence. So the very fact though that you are conscious and you're getting more and more consciously aware in the now moment I know, mind blown. Exactly, Jill. Exactly. But we're not just blowing your mind. We're deconstructing the belief that this is the be all end all reality. And there's just one script. And this is how it is for you, sister or, or, or friend, right? This is it. This is, this is all you got. Mage bed, got a line and all that be those BS cliches. Because the reality needs you to believe in it in order for it to stay anchored for you to experience it. And that's why as you're about to shift, it looks like the reality is making the biggest hissy fit ever going, no, this is real. This is real. Come here, dance with me because it needs you to breathe life in it. It needs you to bring emotion in it. If you've ever saw the movie Monsters, Inc., by Pixar and Disney, right? It literally is what we're talking about here, right? And if you think about all the different doors, all the monsters, right? Their job was the, the revolving doors and they would go into the room and they would scare the kid and the kid would scream in fear and they would collect the essence of the energy of the emotion and they would bring it back because that's the energy that fueled their world. But they later learned later on in the movie that laughter gave a 3x or 10x output of energy versus the fear. And we create all of this. We create all the demons. We create all the angels. We, whatever it is that you believe in. And that's why you want to make sure whatever you're allowing to influence you, just right now these videos are influencing you, that whatever influences you, it adds on to you. The moment that you have a mind that comes in and says, you're not doing this good enough, or you're doing it wrong, or why aren't you further? Every sentence of every echo lets you know the, represent, the, the reality it represents. It must reveal itself to you. So if you, if you get a thought that says that'll never happen, and you decide to emotionally attach to it, You've just entered the that'll never happen reality. And guess what? Not only will that never happen in that reality, a that'll never happen reality has everything that'll never happen. Now it's just for you because you'll see it happening for everyone else. But that'll never happen reality won't happen for you. And that's why we use that zero point activation. We pull out of the story and we've only done three deep breaths and three minutes. I do have to do one for six minutes and then nine minutes in heaven because the more longer you pull out and you don't have to wait for me to do the video, you can do this. It's the same thing at six minutes that we did for three at nine minutes, but you'll experience things. And I go into this deeper into my energetic mindset solution course. Zero to three minutes, certain things happen. Four to six minutes, certain things happen. Seven to nine minutes, certain things happen. And you really don't have to go beyond that nine minutes. You, you stay awake and aware and you pull out of the reality. And 
because you're not in that reality giving it energy, all the energy focuses on the center dot, which is your body. And you go deeper and deeper to the point where you can go so deep, you can start to feel your hair growing. You can start to feel your cells dividing. You can start to feel the digestion and, and your heart beating from the, from the inside out. So I was explaining to someone today, I had this wonderful experience because I just she just started a nutrition plan with me. And I said to her, I do hot yoga. And it's 90 minutes in a 105 degree room, 40% humidity. And it's the same class over and over and over again in the same positions in the same order, which is wonderful because the subconscious mind takes over because it knows exactly what to do. I don't even have, once you are in that class and you do it enough, you don't have to think. You can let all thinking go and the body will just start to move. So that was one great uh, awareness it gave me. But the other awareness that I had is if I eat within three hours of the class, I sweat a whole lot more. Sometimes I have to take breaks because my body is busy digesting and doing the hot yoga. But if I fast for at least three hours prior to the class, the body is not digesting and all that extra energy doesn't have to be generated while I'm doing yoga and digestion that I hardly even sweat, that the class is a piece of cake. So when we do the undoing, when we stop the thought, your thoughts take up so much energetic currency. I, I have a, a training where there's 86,400 seconds in a day, and I call that your energetic currency. Imagine every day you wake up with $86,400 of energetic currency, and you could either invest it in you or spend it. And let me give you the example of the difference. Investing it in you is being centered and conscious and making choices that add on to you. How you spend that is when you're scrolling needlessly on, on social media or watching a TV show. And there's nothing wrong with we don't have to invest every single dollar. You can chill and relax and watch TV and so forth. Hey, Kat, how are you? Welcome. But when you start to use that, that energetic currency, you get $86,400 every day, even for the time that you're asleep. Notice how you're spending your time and attention because you're either giving it away to an unwanted reality, killing time, waiting for stuff to happen because the waiting reality never gets fulfilled. Or you can invest your time dollars, your time currency, being so conscious in your choices that the inspired action doesn't take that long to move you. So when people say to me uh, as their coach, what do I do next? And if there isn't a movement yet, you're still spending your currency. You haven't invested. Go deeper into the zero point. Go deeper and deeper into the zero point. Allow yourself to have the, um, you're, you're learning the three minute zero point. Go into that six. Feel how different the six minute zero point is to the three. Go into the nine, the nine minutes in heaven, especially first thing in the morning. And the nine minutes is way different than the six. You would think, what's the difference of three minutes? Because by the time you're getting into the four to six minute mark, you're no longer the character pulling out of the reality. You've already been out of the reality for a good three minutes. So that four to six minutes, there's a big change. And then staying focused to that seven to nine minutes is a whole different world. If you want to really understand what the now moment is, start making that your goal. Because that is going to be so delicious for you that you're going to, and you may have heard some teachers say this, that it stops being about the stuff and it starts being about you as the creator and what it is that you're tapping into as this character. That's where the true power comes in. So when you start to go deeper into the zero point, a lot of the manifestation questions, and I'm giving you like, I'm spilling the tea here, guys. This is the, this is the secret sauce. The deeper you go into the now, the less questions you're going to have coming out because you're going to start to realize experientially how thought is unnecessary, how what you're going to be experiencing inside yourself, the feel, 
I, I, without any other thing to compare it to, it's like a thousand orgasms going off at the same time, but it's a whole body gasm. Like the the unconditional love, but that even putting words on that like that doesn't even compare to what you will feel. I remember the first time I induced that as an adult, I had, I used to do it a whole lot naturally as a kid. I just thought that was the thing that everybody did. And of course I conditioned myself out of that. But when it found me again, my thought was if I could get people to just experience one minute of this bliss, the, the, you call it nirvana, you call it bliss. It's been called so many different things in so many different traditions. And people always say to me, well, if it's that good, why come back? Why come back into this physical 3D reality? Because it energizes you in such a way that when I go into that state, I remember when I first did it, I was like, oh, I got to get thought back. I got to start thinking again. And the more that I went into it, the more I allowed myself to just stay in that pure observation state. And it's almost like you're floating on air when you're walking. Like I know some of this stuff sounds so weird or mind blowing, but these are the experiences that I'm ultimately leading you to. Nothing you want is in thought. Everything that you're desiring is the experience. So you might as well start giving yourself the experience within you. So to go back to Jill's question, if you're thinking about how do I get the money to get the house, you haven't given yourself the house. Because you, when you have a car, let's say you have a car and you've paid it off, you're not sitting here going, how can I get the money to pay off my car when it's, it's already paid off? So that's where we have to go into the mind and say, I'm this person. Not only is that my house, I don't even have a mortgage. I own it outright. Because if you're going to go into your imagination, go big. You could imagine yourself with a mortgage, but why would you? Because then you got to keep coming and getting the money. And then you got to keep conjuring the money to pay the bill. So just go into the completion. And, and if you need permission to do this, allow me to give you the permission to do this. In your imagination, you don't have to earn the money to buy something that you want. You don't have to go to the store to buy the thing that you want. If you want a pizza, you give yourself a pizza. And when you give yourself that house or that car or that business or that job or that partner, all you got to do is stay there. Be so stubborn and stay there. Allow the 3D to have its hissy fit, but still stay there. Because if you don't take the bait back into the old reality and you allow what's happening to happen, because what you're doing is you're rewriting the story over top of what's happening. We gave a great example. I think it was in yesterday's uh, video five, episode five, that if you bought the lottery ticket, the big one for the weekend, and you just haven't checked it yet, whatever room that you're in right now is the room of whatever your net worth is, right? Let's say you have a thousand bucks in the bank to your name. That's This is what the room looks like when there's a thousand dollars to your name. But then you go and check that lottery ticket when we're done and you just won $1.3 billion. It appears to you that you're still in the same room, but you're not. You're in a whole different reality. Is the money in your hand yet? No. It's what it implies. It's what it represents. It's probably going to take you a good three to six months before you really start to see that money in your bank account because of all the preparation you now have to go do. But you will be thinking very differently because this little piece of paper that isn't worth a dollar that it's printed on is now worth $1.3 billion. Why? Because you believe the reality that you're in. So all we're doing in manifestation is conjuring the reality before the physical proof because the law of reciprocity says whatever you can do in this direction, you can do in the opposite direction. If driving a Lamborghini makes you feel rich or is a symbol that you're wealthy, then being wealthy will get you a Lamborghini. And that's why you have to take these bungee jumps that you have to look at the reality and say, you're allowed to be, what's happening is happening, but I've chosen differently now. 
this is no longer who I am. And I'm going to be so stubborn and move forward until the reality bends and takes a knee to me because I'm the operant power. Another way that I share this in the past is that when I was going through my divorce, I couldn't go and get the divorce right away. And there was going to be a couple years. But what I did, I did not present myself as a married person. I presented myself as a single person, but it had nothing to do with dating other people. It had to do with the rediscovering of myself and not allowing the reality to bully me back into a relationship that I knew was over. And it tried to do that. And no matter what it did, I'm still standing. I moved forward. I didn't take anything it said as truth. I was the truth. This is what I've chosen. Bring me what I've chosen. And next thing you know, in the template that I was in, opportunities started to show up. They literally dropped in my lap. Because no matter how much of a hissy fit the 3D could have, if we're going to have a hissy fit con contest, I'm going to win. I used to do that when the kids, when they were younger, especially if they started to uh, carry on, if we were outside and I told them no, if we were at the store and they started to cry and, and they wanted the toy because they thought if they cried, they were going to get the toy. I'd be like, is that the loudest you got? Can't you go any louder? Everybody look, everybody look, they're, they're throwing a hissy fit. So I brought the attention onto them and reversed what was going on. 3D reality is no, no different than a three-year-old. And I don't know about you, but I don't let three-year-olds run my life. And I'm not going to let a mind or an old script tell me who I am. And through this channel, what I'm, my intention for you is that you are no longer going to allow reality to tell you who you are because it doesn't exist without your consciousness. And this is a beautiful game that we're playing. But think about how highly you must think of yourself that you could say, let me throw you, let me throw myself into these conditions in this video game, and I'm still going to find my way out. And I'm still going to remember who I am because I can't put myself asleep deep enough. Now, I know Neville Goddard um, quotes scripture a whole lot, and I do some references from time to time, but what I find fascinating is the story of Adam and Eve, where the one where in that reality, that story, God puts Adam to sleep to take his rib to create Eve. Now, I always wondered why men don't have one less rib than females, but no, that's for another story. But nowhere in the story does it say that God ever woke Adam or Eve up? And that's why I believe that we are in this one big dream. We, we just go from dream to dream to dream. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, you just got here. I think that's going to be the episode for tomorrow. Really go into that specifically. You just got here. I, I think of, if you remember the old um, Frosty the Snowman uh, videos that we watched as a kid and we had to be in front of the TV or you'd miss it. And every time his hat was blown off his head, he, he wouldn't be alive anymore. He'd be frozen again and, and very static. And then he put the hat on and he would say, happy birthday. That was his way of like, I just got here. That was his consciousness hat. So every time you open up your eyes, whether you're doing zero point, whether you're doing a meditation, whether you've gone to sleep, You've pulled out of the reality. You're still in the template, but you've pulled out of the reality. And you come back in and there is no story other than you are the story. What do you command? Right? Magic Genius always says, your wish is my command. You're the one. You're not wishing. You're commanding. You're the magic genie in your reality. Okay, guys. So remember, the subconscious mind doesn't need to be impressed. If it did, you'd be worried about your heartbeat. You would be worried about digestion. You would be worrying about all of your breathing. The fact that things are on automatic pilot lets you know that the subconscious got you. You just got to pick the new system. And, and just imagine if you walk into a room and you turn the light switch on, it's on. And if someone walks in behind you and turns it off or you turn it off, you can't be mad that you wanted it on, but you just turned it off. You're the one doing it. So if you ask for a million dollars, but then you get all emotional over a thousand dollars in your bank account, 
You turned on the million, but you just turned it off because you had a contradicting thought. And your subconscious mind is going, hold the hold, hold it. They wanted the million. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. They just changed their mind. They just had this other thought and they really believe in it. So we got to, unfortunately, they can't override you. Your subconscious mind can't override your command. It then goes and gives you back to the thousand dollar reality. And then when you add on to the thousand dollar reality, why is this happening to me? Why, why am I in this situation? Then that also gets activated in that reality. So it's no longer just a thousand dollar reality. It's a reality where you're complaining and griping and moaning and groaning. If I were to give you one thing today, when you come out of your three minute zero point and you know you're in your assumption, you're in your reality, go into deep appreciation. Stay in deep appreciation. You have light bulbs, you have, you have walls, you have windows, you have a floor, you have a chair, anything and everything that you took for granted on the template, your mind is giving it to you. It's instantly manifesting and it's keeping it there. So give deep appreciation to all the stuff, all the stuff. And then as you were doing something, you could say, oh, wouldn't it be nice if, I was actually sharing with Kervin last night that yesterday I had this weird feel in my mouth and it felt like my gums were starting to um, get really, really puffy. And then if I kind of bit down, I started to feel a pain and I'm gone. What, what's going on here? I'm always healthy. That includes teeth. That includes everything. Why is, you know, like this is happening. So it went on for a little while. And then I went into the bathroom. I looked in the mirror. I saw it. And I said, I see you there. But by tomorrow morning, you're going to be gone. I don't know what this is. This is none of my business. It's allowed to be right now, but it's going to be gone. It was gone four hours later. It was apps and it's been gone since. Like that's how... When we're commanding our reality, it doesn't always have to be, Ur. it could just be, I see you. No, thank you. That's it. Wrong number, however you want to call it. So before we wrap up here, guys, do you have any more questions? Is there anything else that you'd like to touch on? Um, while I'm waiting to see if your questions pop up, just a reminder, Monday starts the next three-day event. We will have another client testimonial going up on the channel on Saturday. But we will continue with the daily episodes of the deep dive into the now. And I know I had an idea of what the deep dive is tonight, but let's, I'm so in the now moment, it could absolutely change by the time I sit to hit record. So don't hold me technically to it, but it eventually, there's so many wonderful topics that if I actually had to sit down and try to put these all in order, I probably would drive myself crazy. But just know that they're going to be good. There's always going to be another one. And the other day, for some reason, it took forever to um, upload. So just know that if for some reason it doesn't upload in time, I think it started about 20 after 12 yesterday. Just know that it's it's a technical situation and it'll, it'll correct itself. Don't forget to vote on the community chosen video. Also take a look at the new times that I'm offering to change the live so we can keep it at eight or we can go earlier. There are the options. Go and vote on that. Thank you again for sharing all the things that you do, all your beautiful comments. Thank you so much. I appreciate them deeply. I love feedback. So the more feedback you can give, the more comments you want to give, it's absolutely um, so appreciated. Share the channel, like the videos, send me ideas, always send me your questions. And because my goal here is to get this to you, but again, it's not about the information. It's about giving you the experience because the more and more you play with the experience, just like going to the gym, the more and more you play around with the dumbbells and the different equipment and all the machines, it, it stops being this overwhelming thing. And it now is so much fun. It's one big playground. Any other questions? I don't see the chat moving. I guess we're all good on questions. All right. So if you, got something powerful out of this live today, go into the regular comment section, pop that down. What is it that really blew your mind? That was an aha moment. What are you going to try in your new experience? I'm always loving to hear that. Thank you so much for being here with me again. Thank you. Uh, and this is why we're doing this beautiful dance. When I had this vision, what this was going to be like, you guys are all part of the wish fulfilled. I'm, and I'm so thrilled that you show up and that you show up daily. And that's my commitment to you to do the same thing. 
All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your evening. Episode seven is going to drop at noon tomorrow. And don't forget to go vote so that I can know because this is your channel. What is it that you want? I'm here to serve. How may I serve you? All right, wonderful. All right, bye, Mar uh, Marjorie, Jill, Kat, Kervin, anyone else that's here that didn't um, say your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you next time. Enjoy.